Good morning, everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to our inaugural ABCs of BCAM. Uh, that is uh, advertising, branding, and communications for branch communications and marketing. Uh, I am Anita Bringus. I'm the strategic support manager for Unit Um, I lead the team. And we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you, Enrico, for running the slides. And you can go ahead and proceed to the next one. So um, ABCs, advertising, branding, and communications. This encompasses uh, much of what BCAM does. And uh, this is a topic that we will be going over at these monthly sessions. Next slide, please. So um, I wanted to start with a, a welcome and an overview of what we'll be covering during the ABCs, why we're doing this, what these sessions will cover, and who the team is. So why are we doing this? Uh, we realize with a large campus and uh, ever growing campus, as well as over the last several years, a lot of the communications and trainings and guidelines that we've distributed to campus, there's been a lot of uh, turnover in faculty and staff and students, obviously. And so a lot of the information that we've shared out may or may ha not have gotten transferred over in those transitions. So we felt this was an opportunity, one, for us to engage with departments across campus, two, to inform the campus community on the resources that are available to you, and three, empower you to be able to access those resources. On the next slide, we'll talk about what we'll do it, be doing during these ABCs. One, we'll clarify what we do, who we are as a department, what our scope of work with, and those areas where there might be a, a campus need or you might have a need, but that may not fall in uh, the areas of responsibility or the ability of, of BCAM to do. Uh, we'll ensure that you're aware of uh, the UNM branding standards that we as a branch are, are also required to uphold. We'll communicate our processes, guidelines, and workflow so you have a better understanding of if you need a flyer or a website update or whatever those needs are, uh, the things that are self-service that you have access to do so yourselves and where uh, BCAM can provide some support. And then we'll demonstrate uh, various resources that, that we have available. <clears throat> so uh, who we are, I'll turn it over to the different members of the team to come up to the front of the room here if uh, to introduce themselves and talk about a little bit about what they do for the department. Hey, everybody. You pretty much all know me. I'm Enrico Trujillo. I'm a multimedia developer here at UNM Taos. Uh, my role at the moment is really taking care of the website, taking care of print and design and, and media elements uh, that can relate anywhere from uh, something that we put in the Taos News, uh, some banner ads that we place on websites and things like that, uh, to uh, supporting social media endeavors, um, bringing in, um, uh, doing photo photography and video uh, for, for various elements and uh, purposes for communicating what's going on on campus, who our students are, and things like that. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically what I do here. Um, and I'll bring up Teresa. And if I can add, while well, Teresa's making her way up, um, and Enrico is, um, his, his scope and his responsibility, I think, it extends and expands much further beyond what he has shared. Um, he has grown to really be um, the kind of the, 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 the lead for BCAM um, work and is uh, provides guidance and mentorship to the rest of the team on BCAM um, over the last couple of years, especially as my uh, attention and priorities have been pulled to other things on campus and in the community. And Rico's really stepped up to take the lead uh, in, in managing and overseeing the department. Um, and we are, the, so his title, Multimedia Development Specialist, certainly does not encompass uh, who he is and what he does and the amazing skill set that he brings to the, de the department and the campus. And we're currently working with human resources to, to rectify that. So Teresa, please, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Teresa Mundigo. I'm an admin assistant three and I work with BCAM as well. And what I do for BCAM is I do the online calendar and you guys submit a ticket. I look through it, make sure it's correct. If it's not correct, I send it back to you. And then I gather all that information and on Friday, I do the what's happening. So whatever's on the online calendar goes on the what's happening on Friday. So everybody knows what's going on. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Teresa, as well, uh, her title, Administr uh, Administrative Assistant 3, uh, is a very broad title. Um, Teresa has been on campus for, what, 20, 20 years? Wow. It Rico for 25, 27, three with the system? 23. With, this, with the UNM system. Um, and uh, Teresa <clears throat> brings with her also a really broad uh, skill set. Uh, she's good at a lot of different things. She's been on campus for a really long time. She has a good understanding of how various things work. So she's been a huge asset and resources and support to not only BCAM, but uh, administrative support to, to me. Uh, she also has been managing the events at Baton Hall, um, supporting campus events here at Clower, uh, and just has, has brought her huge skill set in a variety, variety of different areas. Um, and next we'll call up Scott Gurdon. Come on up. <laughs> Thanks for saying my last name. <laughs> most people certainly. Uh, most of you know me too. Um, I am mostly responsible for. Um, I also, well, I also, top of mind, um, do help with some social media. Um, I do mobile bites. I do print ads and radio ads. Um, create and schedule them, and press releases, mostly. Yep. As you all know, we all wear a lot of hats on campus, and it's it's hard in the few minutes we have to introduce ourselves to really share the, the breadth and depth of uh, all the various things that we do uh, in our in our day to day work. Um, and Scott is certainly no exception. Um, Scott's coming to us uh, most recently from the Taos News, where he served as a special sections editor um, for the Taos News, and so he is a tremendous. Uh, journalism, editing, copywriting skills, and um, not here with us today, but one of the newest additions to our team is Felice Mondragon. Felice was a, uh, is a current graduate of UNIF Taos. Uh, she was serving as a work study, supporting our department a few hours a week. <clears throat> and we're very fortunate to have been able to transition to an on-call staff as a marketing assistant. Her primary role is uh, she's taking on more and more of the social media marketing. And she's really excited to be launching some new things that at a future session, she'll be talking more about the details on that. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Anita Bringus. I'm the strategic support manager for UNIF Taos. Uh, branch communications and marketing is one of the areas that I oversee. Um, but again, you know, I, I really want to emphasize that while there's uh, five names on this list, um, Felice is uh, on call part-time, 0.25 hours, so up to 10 hours a week. She's really only working with us maybe five. Uh, Teresa, as I was mentioning, she has a lot of other areas of responsibilities that she supports on campus. So her support to BCAM is a limited as well and kind of as a, as a as needed basis. So really the, the department, uh, we have two full-time staff that are really dedicated to branch communications marketing and that's Scott and Enrico. Um, I, uh, while I oversee the department, again, as I said, I've largely stepped back and Scott and Enrico have really stepped up to take the lead on those things. And, uh, and I really have appreciated their, their work and also Enrico's leadership. Um, so moving on, um, here's an example of some of the things that we do and that we're responsible for. One of the things I wanna start by saying is that as branch communications and marketing, our primary responsibility and goal uh, is to uh, advertise brand and communicate for the branch uh, externally. Uh, so the work that we do to the external community to raise awareness, uh, to brand the campus and the community, to make sure that people in the region are aware that, please come in, don't be shy, come on in. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, we're, we're promoting and advertising and branding campuses, Unum Taos as a whole. Uh, our objective is to, as we're communicating with the, the public, to uh, initiate or elicit a reaction or response that would cause them or pique their interest to pick up a phone, send an email, go to a website, or come onto campus. Um, so it's, it's that broad kind of, you know, 20 to 30,000 foot, foot view of 
advertising, branding, and communications to the public, wanting to get people to do something, which is the next step. Um, that's what we do externally. Um, and so that includes things like print ads, radio, social media, billboards, et cetera, um, the website. And then of course we do a lot of internal communications and, as well. And that includes things like when you see a memo or an update going out to the campus, it's usually BCAM that has created that or worked with a campus community member to create draft edit that. Press releases, uh, articles that you see in the Taos News have largely been written by Scott. Um, <clears throat> website design and maintenance is largely handled by Enrico and that's the broader website uh, and then each individual page as well. Social media, we have currently five, I believe it is, if not six, um, official UNM Tau State Facebook platforms. And then we support a couple different departments on managing and maintaining theirs. Event promotion, this is a full-time job in and of itself uh, for the department. Creating banners, ads, flyers, programs, being on, on uh, boots on the ground the day of or leading to events such as spring fling, fall festival, graduation. Uh, our department plays a big, big role in coordinating and organizing and implementing events. Uh, <clears throat> managing, maintaining, and disseminating the online calendar that Teresa talked about. We'll, at a future session, we'll get a little bit more into detail about that. We manage the listservs. Um, that will be another topic for a future session, uh, but we currently have <laughs> five, official campus listservs. Uh, so there's a staff only listserv, a student only listserv, a faculty only listserv. And then we have a, a fourth one that is faculty and staff combined, unduplicated. And then we have a fifth one, which is all campus. So it's faculty, students and staff combined, unduplicated. So we, we manage the back of the house on those, adding, uh, removing people from those on a regular basis as needed, uh, reviewing and sending requests to send out to those respective listservs. Again, that's a converse, that's a whole conversation for another day that we'll get into later. Um, department specific requests. So each and every one, we have 150 people on campus. We have, I lost track of how many different academic departments and hundreds of classes a semester. So if you think about, if you think about just the hive alone, right? And the events and activities that you do there, if you think about SGA alone, if you think about the K-12 efforts alone and the, the events and activities and promotion and advertising that each of you do within your team, trio, you be, I mean, each and specific thing, BCAMP supports the whole campus. Um, Go ahead and go to the next slide, if you would. Here's an example of some of the things that we've created. So everything from here's the website, homepage, uh, the cover of the enrollment guide, which we have samples of here at the front. Uh, these are some full page, ads. full page ads in the Taos News in different special publications. Again, this is raising awareness in the, in the, in the broad, broader community. Uh, this is a specific one that we did highlighting our uh, some of our graduates, one specific to nursing. Um, this one is uh, EMS. We supported to do a special project for them. This is a uh, actually a multi or two page brochure booklet um, promoting the events. Uh, go ahead and go on to the next. Oh, this is a I'm just pause there for a second. This is a and actually a spread of a booklet that Enrico helped uh, Bailey in the recruitment office develop for when they go out on recruitment events. On the next slide, you'll see some additional examples. Uh, on the top left is an example, of the, the text of a radio script that Scott created. Um, we have a, uh, we'll hold off on that for just a second. We create specialized, customized Zoom backgrounds for different activities or events. Enrico manages and creates all the campus maps, keeps those updated. Uh, we have a full page, what we call a Pathways to Success article in the Taos News. So once a month, we feature different either uh, programs or departments or events or activities or registration. Um, in this particular one, this was in November. So we were doing kind of uh, couching on the theme of Native American Heritage Month. Um, Native students are one of the populations that we really are trying to target for enrollment that we need to increase 
uh, as our male students. And so this is a highlight on some of our students and quotes on what benefits that they receive from attending UNIP Taos. Um, we also have a, a student population um, that's an older demographic. So making sure that our marketing is really um, represents the faces of the people that are on campus and that we want to encourage to come to campus. This is an example of our uh, Instagram page. You can see the real stunning photos that we do. And then this is the homepage of our, uh, our, our, of our Facebook account. Um, so I wanna go back up to an example. So when Scott writes the script, he's got, it's what, 30 second? Yes. And how many words is that? Well, it's about 70. 70 words? You'd be, you'd be amazed how quickly 70 words goes. You've gotta put a lot of information into a very, very compact thing. Um, and what we'd love to do at some point is share with you what, how it transitions from being this text that Scott writes to hearing Brad on KTAL saying, reading off this script. Make 2023 your year. Take the first steps towards your career goals at UNM Taos. From business to healthcare and truck driving to fine arts, UNM Taos's many programs will give you the tools to thrive, and their friendly instructors and staff will support you along the way. Ask about free tuition for New Mexicans. This is your college. You belong here. Visit taos.unm.edu. We are UNM Taos. We are Lobo Familia. Go ahead and on to the next slide, please. Um, actually, back up a second, sorry. So while we're on here, um, again, this is just a kind of a smattering of some of the things that we do. Um, so, so one of the things that we're hoping to kind of raise awareness and understanding on is with a team of essentially two full-time staff uh, with support from Teresa, with some support from police, with really the support I give is only when they need, you know, uh, support or ideas or to bounce something off. But really, it's it's primarily Scott and Enrico that are doing all of this. So one thing that I, I really encourage you all to, to understand is um, there's a lot we do. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and there's um, and there's no it, it's there's no shortage of it. Right. And it keeps it only increases as new things are happening in academic departments or the hive has a new class or we have a phenomenal SGA five new student clubs that are pending and all of them want to get word out on what they're doing. So with that, we, and then again, remembering what our big overall mission is, is getting people to the door, right? Um, is it, it gets a little challenging covering all those or managing all that with the time and the resources that we have. Uh, we all work really, really hard as all of you do. And we do, every single day we do our very best. Um, part of our whole intent in holding these sessions is to, um, for us to, to, to help you help us be able to do that better, more effectively, more efficiently, better quality, and, and with a quicker turnaround time. Um, so with that are some of the things that we don't do. Uh, we, we often get, all of our team often gets a lot of requests because they know that we might be good at something, um, or it's kind of semi-related to a digital thing, or semi, like peripherally related, um, or maybe one of us used to do something in the, the past that really doesn't, uh, is not relevant to our current scope of work. So some of the things that we don't do um, that are handled by different departments is, for example, we don't do course delivery and instruction. That's film and digital media, DMA, which is now referred to as film and digital media arts. Um, we don't do equipment maintenance or checkouts, like for video cameras or cameras or things like that. Uh, we don't do trainings on things like that. Um, we, we used to have a digital media services department that it was a, it was a team of, I think, three people, Louis, Enrico, and Francis, that they had a, a set of equipment of video cameras and cameras and props and whatnot, and they would go around campus doing video recordings, going out to the community doing video recordings. We don't have that anymore. Um, 
audio visual like checkout. Um, we don't do that. Um, in, uh, let's see, IT, uh, our information technology department handles all in, um, computer installation and maintenance. We don't do that. We don't train you how to use your new smartphone. Um, we don't manage like help desk ticket supports, like your computer's not working. Eureka doesn't do that. Um, we don't do anything about net, the computer network, internet, Wi-Fi, your telephone, um, your office phone, how to use the directory. We can help point you to the right direction in how to do that. Software downloads, email support, um, printers, student computers or labs. Um, that's all falls under IT and not something that we do. If, if you ask one of us to do that, we will very graciously refer you over to IT. Uh, the Office of Educational Technology, Aaron Duddy, handles the learning management system, Canvas, Canva, Canvas, Canvas, Canvas. Uh, Canvas. course planning and instructional design. So if you're teaching an online class, she can help you develop that. Um, online course evaluation and assessment, uh, classroom technology support for instruction and faculty, uh, Zoom technology support and instruction. BCAM doesn't do that, that's OET. Um, the things that we went over is largely, largely what we do. Um, you can always, if you're not sure, you can always ask or submit a ticket, um, but I just, I want to make sure that you're not surprised or offended or like WTH if one of us says, um, really would love to help you, but that's a, let me refer you to, TAS, uh, to IT. Here's how to submit a ticket for IT, or here's how to contact Aaron to help you with this particular thing. Any questions on that before we move on? Maida. Um, so just thinking, to want to create like a promotional video, like for example, for Trio SSS, what, so what resources would be available to put something like that? Let me do that. So it's, it's, Here's where I want to be careful. So I want to say that it's not something, if we were, if that were to happen, it is something that BCAM would lead. Um, where we have to be careful is it's a it's a special project. It's very time consuming. It takes a lot of the you know, time and attention away from the team. It's something that with enough lead time and enough time to create and produce it, BCAM could support you with that. Um, the other thing that we want to be careful with is we, if we do it for, for TRIO, that's one thing, um, but we don't have the capacity to do a video production or promotional thing for every single academic and student support and services program on campus. So we have to be, we do those things kind of on a case by case basis. Um, there is, and we'll go over this in a moment, in the BCAM request form, there is a, a, an item or a selection for video, photo or video. So what we would ask you to do is submit a ticket. Um, we would sit down with you, talk about what your vision is, talk about the time frame. Um, understand that for every minute of post-production video that's ready to go to public takes 10 minutes of work time. What is the- Well, it, it, it all depends on the exact nature of it. Um, and all I would really say on that is that, yes, come in, talk about it. We, we, we're aware of the resources that are out there. And depending on the time that you have, the money you have, the volunteer you have, et cetera, we can help you choose the best uh, option for getting something like that done. It may not be me, uh, but it may be some of the resources that are, that are available in town, or we've been talking with our mirror entity in Albuquerque, who uh, also offers similar resources. Thank you for that, Enrico. Um, so the short answer is submit a ticket. And, and we'll sit down and, and work it through with you and figure out the best way to move forward is. Um, and the reason, I, the reason I say we don't tend to do that is again, it's, it's, a, it's if it's something that we do take on through BCAM, uh, it's a whole production in and of itself. Um, and it's, there's a lot of time and, and uh, resources that are required to produce a quality video that we'd be comfortable in putting out. Now that said, one of the other things that we will be doing is, and this will probably be in a session on the social media one, is we're all video producers. If you have a smartphone, you're a video producer. And there's ways that you can take super high quality uh, video snippets 
to use on your website, to post on social media, et cetera. So we will be going over that. Again, there's the, here's the things that we want to empower you and train you and how to, how to do. Um, and here are the things that we can do for you. And here are the things that we might pull in another outside resource to, to help see your vision come through. It's a good question, Maida, thank you. Um, any other questions before we move on? Yes. Sure. Um, in terms of social media, could there be support in, in getting maybe a trail SSS, uh, you know, account on social media and getting that set up properly? Mm -hmm. Because I, I don't know if there, if there is actually, to be honest, at the moment, but it would be nice to have it. Set do you want to feel that or do you want me to? So we want to encourage, we want to, we're going to have uh, other uh, seminars like this in the future that are kind of cover social media specifically. Uh, part of the gist of those is that it does take time and effort to manage and maintain those social media accounts. Um, you may have the support and resources to do that, um, but that's also can be challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, we do do social media for the university and you can send your information, your photos, your event sorts of um, bits to us. And with that information, we can find a, an appropriate place on our existing social media mm -hmm. accounts mm -hmm. to, to put that out. Again, it, the process would be meet with us. We'll talk about the, the options. Uh, but uh, when it's like, oh, we just got to have a social yeah. media account, it's going to make a big difference. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of network connections. It takes a lot of, 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 of knowledge in order to have a growing and uh, useful uh, a thing. Now you can, yeah, that's all. Yeah, so thank you, Enrico. So that's another really good question, one we get asked a lot. Um, I want a social media page. How do I get a social media page? If every one of you had a social media page, that would be 10 social media pages that you would have to create in connection to your own personal Facebook account, right? Then um, you win the lottery and you move to Bermuda and you that goes with you. So on the um, at the front, there's a list of our social media, our official Unitel social media accounts. There's five, six of them, five of them. Um, what's not listed there are the 20 plus social media accounts on Facebook alone that a department created because they needed a social media account and either the administrator of the account is still here, but they do not actively update and use the social media account. So it's completely inactive and it's just this folding up space or two, that person has left and we have no way to access and administer that account, but it holds up that name. I believe there does exist a, a UNM Taos Trio page. The people that used to run Trio are no longer here. That account was connected to their personal page. We have no way to access it. So for, for those and two, um, and this, we'll get into this a little bit when we get into the logo use as well. We, the more logos we have, the more Facebook pages we have, it doesn't actually do what we think or hope it's gonna do. It doesn't create more energy and attention and excitement, it actually dilutes it. And so to Enrico's point, um, what I would encourage you to do, so, so the answer is not no, it's a, let's do a couple things first. Let's first, if you have something you wanna promote for your area or department on social media, submit a BCAM request form, we'll show you how to do that shortly. Um, select social media posts, include the text and an image you want to include, and we'll get that out for you. Now, if, if in doing that, we're noticing that the TRIO SSS posts are getting a lot of attention and activity and comments and likes and shares and whatnot, and they're doing that over a period of time, then we might say, huh, maybe it is worth TRIO SSS having their own unique Facebook page. If we were to do that, we would create the account. We would assign you as a temporary administer, administrator, but we would be the holders of the account you could still personalize it, make it your own, um, and manage it. But that way, it, when you when the lottery moved to Bermuda, then we can remove you as administrator. And you know, if we say Dorothy is a new trio um, manager, then we can assign Dorothy as that. Um, the other thing that's a really really important note is we just hired a ten hour week 
social media person. I mean, you know, in, in Feliz, the marketing assistant, unless you can commit from your department five to 10 hours a week to do nothing but manage your social media, you should not have a social media page because it takes posts, regular posts every day, liking, tagging, sharing, creating those networks for really for it to be effective. Um, we're gonna have a whole session on social media. So that's a really good question. Um, let's go ahead and move on. I'm not sure what time it is. So now um, we'll get into today's topics. Uh, we'll do a brief overview on two primary resources that are available to you. I'll turn it over now to Enrico to talk about some online resources that are available at the BCAM website. So hello. Um, I just want to make sure that you know that we're trying to supply resources to, to all of you. Uh, sometimes you can like start a project and like, oh gosh, I know I, I need a logo or uh, I want to make it look like things, or well, I just, I'm tired of red and silver. Uh, are there other colors that we can use? And there are answers to those things. And the best thing to do is to come and ask. Uh, uh, I am currently the logo liaison for our campus, which means that uh, I'm a person who holds the the some 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 nice little information and i'm responsible for for divvying it out so if you need a logo i can can hand it out to you uh, i also go in with a little bit of information on how to use that appropriately appropriately uh sometimes it's very easy to stretch and distort uh, logos and that's something that uh is confusing to our brand to, to, that makes people say, oh, did they change the logo sort of thing? Can I add something yes. to that while you're talking about logos? We're going to have a whole session, maybe two, on logos because logos is a whole thing. The, um, we're really fortunate to have Enrico as a logo liaison. Um, and by liaison, we mean to UNM Albuquerque. A lot of what we're doing here and talking about here are, are we're trying to make sure that we as a campus are following the requirements and the guidelines of the University of New Mexico. They have a very, very, very strict um, protocols uh, and requirements around branding, including logos, including colors, including fonts, including images. Um, so if we, like, say you take it upon yourselves to create a flyer and one of us is like, mm, can we just here, can we make some suggestions or can we help you adjust that? It's to, please don't take it personally. It's only because we're responsible for making sure that anything that comes out of this campus um, upholds those standards. The logo portion of the branding guidelines from UNM alone is, if you can print it out, it's probably this thick. We're not asking you to download and memorize all of those branding uh, logo requirements because Enrico has. <laughs> um, and um, so again, it's the, the, there's there's some things that are that are, are more critical than others when we're doing our own marketing and, and flyer creation. Um, those primary things that um, will will make one of us pick up the phone and call you or show up in your office with your flyer and be like, let's chat about this and let, let us help you with it, is logo use, appropriate logo use, color, size, et cetera. Um, to um, branding colors and use of colors. And fire was completely inappropriate. Um, and it was like a cease and desist, remove these flyers immediately from campus. That was an example of when a flyer did not come through BCAP. Um, the other thing that I will say regarding logos is that there is one logo for Yoda Taos that has been created by and authorized by the University of New Mexico for us to use, and that's this one. There's different variations. This is the white variation of the logo. Um, there's the color variation of the logo. Um, and there's one that's very, very seldom used, which is the black variation of the logo. The black logo will only be used when you're creating a black and white document. Um, this minus the Taos, that is the institutional logo. The next level of hierarchy of that is the branch logos. There is no next level variation of that for a branch. 
So that's to say, sorry to hijack this real quick, Enrico. I'll, I'll use this whiteboard. So um, forgive my very poorly drawn version of this logo. Um, so let's say this is our campus logo, right? There's not a UNM Taos My Department logo. Um, you can't take that logo and put a line and put department and now that you've created your own logo. Um, in other words, you, you, we can't, you can't create your own logo. Um, and again, if we had, if every single one of you had a special logo for your office or department or you know, whatever, um, we would have 50 different logos and it would dilute our branding rather than enhancing our branding. There are some exceptions to that. Hive has their own logo. They went through a whole process that we had to get approval from UNM to create a UNM Taos Hive logo. SBDC has their own logo because it's a federal program. TRIO has their own logo because it's a federal program. So there's some exceptions to that, but you know I can't say UNM Taos logo line strategic support services and now I have my own logo. We just we can't do that. Um, sorry to totally hijack your presentation, Enrico, but those were just some, again, we'll get into more about logos, but that's probably your biggest takeaway to, um, for today. So there's also um, things that people use to communicate regularly, uh, doing a presentation like this. Uh, there's also some, some letterhead stuff that is from main campus that I have sent out to small groups, but I think I might make that available uh, to, to, to more people on our, our website as a resource. Um, Zoom backgrounds, we do a lot of communications with that. Uh, we have initiatives now that relate to special events, uh, certain times of year that we'll be sending out uh, celebratory sort of uh, backdrops um, uh, that you can use and, 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 and use for, for Zoom because we recognize that people use that a lot. And they are, while they're in those meetings, they're representing you and it us. Um, email signatures, again, they're, uh, you're, this is the way that most of us co contact people um, and each of those possibilities of contacting out the outside world is a branding opportunity, and it is something that is covered in the branding um, things that we're responsible for. Um, and so we also want to help you uh, understand what can be done, what can be appropriate, and, and things like that. So again, that's some resources that we have on our webpage, and uh, we'll be freshening that. I'll try to be freshening that up uh, too. There is photo release forms. Uh, a lot of times uh, it's hard to, un we're, we're not all professional photographers, we're not all whatever, but sometimes we take photos that we try to represent our program or, or our class or, or whatnot. Um, there's a whole, uh, this could be its own sort of little seminar thing to, to, to talk about photography and photo release, which it probably will be. Uh, but uh, just to let you know, we have some existing uh, resources like that. So if you are recording or, or, or using images for paid marketing, uh, it would be really great uh, to, to, to have a look at what, what's available there. Um, we're gonna go in and talk about the, the BCAM request uh, form. Uh, and the reason we have the BCAM request, we've covered it uh, already, but uh, it is the first step uh, of interacting with us. It's a way to track and make sure that we're doing what we can to support you. And um, yeah. So uh, we are, I need a short URL. Uh, I'm gonna spend a moment on the goto.unm.edu. Many times our web pages have these long URLs that are hard to get out there to people. And we've also noticed a lot of QR codes, okay? Uh, Goto.unm.edu is a UNM service that allows you to shorten uh, a URL. Uh, this is, will only uh, shorten the URL within the unm.edu domain. So you can't shorten your Facebook account. You can't shorten your, um, bank website account. Uh, so it's within UNM and then you can, you can shorten them. Or you can go to tas.unm.edu and under the faculty and staff area, uh, there is a VCAM uh, page that you can go to.
So again, on uh, this page, there are a series of, uh, of templates, PowerPoint templates. Um, I also have a couple of the class flyer templates. So a lot of people want to promote their classes or their programs or, or whatnot. Uh, and yes, we can bring in a, a flyer request and come through and, and help and support that. But uh, it's not always necessary to do that. Sometimes you get the information at odd patchy little times and we want to supply you with uh, examples uh, that are relatively easy to use so that you can um, do a lot of this, this, this work for yourself or have someone with, who's responsible for that do that. Uh, advertising promotion. Um, there are some guidelines that we have. We also have some social media guidelines uh, that are they're available for you to take a look at. And also the list forms, which I've touched on. Uh, also, business card standards. Um, sometimes, a couple times, uh, coming up with business cards, how to represent people comes up. It's been a sticky situation in, in a couple uh, ways. Um, but there are some default business card uh, standards out there. Um, and if you need other resources, we're a good person to, to talk about and, and see what may work. So, um, yeah, so these are the social media uh, advisement sorts of things. And then uh, some Zoom resources, I'm probably putting up more examples soon. And then this is on our webpage off to the side. There's the VCAD request form. There's a little explanation to get you started on that. But the, the gist of it is that you're going to tell us who you are, how to contact you. And then there is a relatively detailed categorization of, of some of the services that uh, are offered. We're going to go through a process of cleaning that up a little bit. Um, uh, but you are able to upload some photos, upload a presentation, upload um, a logo for, for uh, another group that you're collaborating with and things like that. And that, that gives us all the resources so we can start work on your projects as soon as possible. And we're actually gonna, the next part of this, uh, we're actually gonna call Scott up. He's gonna go over the ticket, the online ticket system, a little bit more detail. Uh, but we'll pause there and see if, uh, if, are there any questions on what Enrico has shared, how to uh, access the VCAM webpage and those online resources? Yes. Excuse me. Um, what is your preferred So each project has its own uh, lead time. We realize that like social media has a very relatively <coughs> turnaround, so that can be relatively brief. Um, when we go out to radio and print ads or getting in the Taos News calendar uh, sort of setup, the Taos News gives us a two-week buffer already. So um, so, you know, it's going to be tight, even three weeks out, if you tell us about something three weeks out, like, oh my gosh, we got five days to do it, sort of, sort of thing, okay? So, you, you've got to understand, sort of, we have some limitations in, in, in the way that when we use outside, uh, uh, outside groups. Um, and then we're going to step back, and you're going to have to think about, um, how much lead time you need for your event. So, oh, now I, well, I, I need 30 days. And I need this 30 days for this flyer. I need 30 days for this something else. Um, we, uh, that's, that's that. So built into that conversation, and I, I'm sorry I'm giving you sort of soft answers, but, um, I realized that it's, that it's, it's a very, very difficult thing. I realized that, oh, you know, like, oh, Enrico said a month. And like, but I just found out about this and we have 28 days to get it done. Do I not contact Enrico? No, you can go ahead and contact me, but I'm going to let you know that like, uh, this is, there's only so much that we can accomplish. And if I could just add to that, cause this is a really important thing too. You know, we, we, we hopefully you all have a little bit better understanding of what, uh, what's on our plates to be responsible for. Within that, we have some regular cyclical things, you know, um, once a month, we come up with a full page ad. Uh, every other week, we come up with a branding ad. Uh, almost every week, we come up with a radio spot. 
every day we're coming up with social media posts. So that's the, the external paid marketing. We have a schedule that we do. Um, we have a schedule of events we know that are going to come up that require a lot of our attention. So within all of that, we respond to individual and department requests, right? So, so part of that too is it's hard to give an exact time frame because it also depends on what else has come in, what else is on our docket from individual and press, what the urgency of those are. Where we can start getting better is if is is by 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 you all have, giving us a more of a lead time. Uh, because a lot of times where we find ourselves is in the lack of that lead time. We have something next week that all of our, it's all hands on deck. All of our attention and focus is now on that thing because we have such a short lead time that everything else is pushed back. So that's one person. If we're dealing with 10 people or 10 departments that are like, oh, we have this thing that we need tomorrow or next week. It, it just blows everything up. It makes it nearly impossible to do things to in the time frame. The level of quality um, that we really deserve as a campus and then it just pushes everything else out it, it creates a lot of stress for us and a lot of stress for you all um, the other thing i'll say if, it, if it's regarding an, uh, an, something that has a launch date be it an event or a promotion or an open house um, our general rule of thumb is that we, you should have all your promotional stuff ready at least a four weeks, a month before that event takes place, at least to really be promoting it for that full four weeks. So then working backwards from there, it's what's the process? Submit a ticket. Uh, it probably will require a sit down and talk about what the thing is. Then they create a, a draft of the thing, right? Whatever, whether it's an ad or a flyer or whatever. There's usually some back and forth in editing. Um, that has to be done in timeline with whatever, if it's going to be a, a paid advertising in print or radio, we have to get it into them two or three weeks ahead of time. And that time that we get it out, remember, is a month before your event happens, right? So um, some things have a shorter, um, but what I will say is as soon as something comes to your mind that you think you might want, set a ticket for it. And at least it's in our queue. There, it's never too early. To submit a ticket for something uh, and to at least starting to get that conversation going so it's on our docket. So there's another salt small take that I'd like to put on that. I know we're running low on time, uh, but uh, another take on that is I want to emphasize the reason why we're having these intend to have these on a monthly basis to cover very particular topics. And one of those may be related to calendars and calendar events. And sometimes um, for for you know not to cover all the details is like, sometimes you can get a free snippet in the calendar yourself in the Taos News if you know where to go and put it in. And you don't necessarily have to come through us if it is, it is that sort of thing. And well, that ends up with conversations about audience and how to communicate and stuff like that. So that's that's for future. But right now we're just go covering the, the resources that we, that we have okay, in the ticketing system. <laughs> And so this is this is an example. We want your name. Like, can we actually, Scott over. was going to cover this part. Oh, we can yeah. turn it over to okay. to Mr. Gertis. Um, so as Scott's coming up, what I will there's a lot of questions that are coming up here, and we realize that today's session is really kind of that broad, three thirty thousand foot overview on BCAM. Um, write your questions down. Write down your ideas for different topics that you want to explore every month. We'll be spending um, the hour talking about two different topics and delving into them a little bit more deeply. So 20 minutes per topic and 20 minutes Q&A and like hands-on stuff. Um, again, today's just kind of a more broad overview and orientation and introduction. But we do want to hear from you on what topics are important to you to delve into a little bit deeper. Now we'll turn it over to Scott that, who will talk about um, one of the most important resources and tools for BCAM, which is our online request form. And to let you know, you can also find this in, I think we all have it in our email signatures, mm -hmm. the link to this too, um, as well as on the website. Um, so just filling this out, it is pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you have any questions about it, is that really what I'm asking for? Just, just you can you can email us personally if you want to ask. We prefer not to get um, requests for work in our emails. It's just 
<laughs> the ticket's good. It helps us keep um, track of it. And yes, thank you. That's a good way to put it. Um, but it is fairly self-explanatory. We'll ask for your contact info and then what your request is. Um, are you needing a press release, for example? Do you need do you have something for logo bites, which would be great? And, um, social media posts. Um, so it's pretty self-explanatory. And then, um, yeah, they will ask you if you have any any images, um, text. Please be as specific as possible um, for that. And if you're asking for, say, a print or a radio ad. You will have to keep in mind that you'll have to have a budget for that. Um, so just keep that in mind when, you, when you're doing that. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh, and once you submit it and we get it, then one of us, usually Enrico and I, will respond to it, let you know that we got it. And if there are any questions or anything, we'll go from there. But um, you'll know that we have it and that we'll get this started. Working on it. Thanks, Scott. Sure. So, a couple of things that I want to point out here, and then we'll open it up to questions. Um, so, in the in the form, you have this list of different options: article, press release, that. Depending on which one you select, the next page when you hit next, it will take you to a customized page and field where we're asking for specific information for that thing. So in this example, in those button, those list of options, we selected mobile bike submission. So you'll the page that will come up will ask you for things that are needed for mobile bikes. If you selected social media post, you'll get a completely different page that will ask you to provide things that we would need for a social media post, similar to flyer, et cetera, et cetera. And so for mobile bikes, um, again, and what you submit here is. We ask that you submit the information here as you want it publicly read, right? So when we ask for a header, instead of putting, I want to talk about my really cool colleague, put um, um, something like, um, yes, yeah, STEM faculty launches new uh, astronomy community viewing session, right? Um, so what we what we do with this information when we get it once you hit submit it populates a ticket the ticket we get notified of the ticket we check the ticket system on a regular basis Scott and Enrico go into the ticket system and say if this is for Teresa this is for police this is for Enrico this is for Scott they allocate based on the project um, once you submit a ticket you'll get an automate automatic notification saying thank you for your ticket. If you do not, once you get that automated response, if you do not hear from someone, like a, a response, like here's a draft of your flyer we requested, or hey, here's, an, here's the screenshot of the social media post we did, or hey, I have some more questions on the flyer, can we meet to talk? If you don't hear from some of us, like personally, within two days of submitting your ticket, um, it means that something's going on. It means either our ticket system is wonky or someone's out of office or, um, something happened and it's if um so we'll we'll ask you if you don't hear from somebody or get any sort of follow-up within two days of receiving the thank you for submitting your ticket um reach out to us okay um now when we talk about like the ticket system this is again just a way for us to track our workflow and assign and delegate our workflow um it, it doesn't mean that you can't pick up the phone and call us or email us um so please do that uh, and, and we'll do the same. We do have our uh, our email information here. Once that conversation gets to a like an actual deliverable, we will ask you to, if you have not already, to submit it to the ticket system. That helps each of the team members be able to prioritize their work. That helps me as a manager to, to help support workflow. Because of, of consistency in using our ticket system, I was able to say, holy schmoly, look at all the work that we're doing. We need more support. Can we get a part-time you know, uh, marketing assistant? And the answer was yes, right? So um, it's really, really important that all requests for work 
go through this ticket system. It can happen before or after an actual conversation. So there's nothing to preclude you, let's say Maya's example, to pick up the phone and call Enrico and say, hey, I'm interested in, again, the minute you have an idea of something, reach out to us. So Myra, instead of submitting a ticket for a video, she could pick up the phone and call one of us and say, hey, Enrico, I'm, I'm kind of interested in doing this video. Can we sit and talk about it? They can sit and talk. And maybe the end result is it's not a ticket, meaning it's not an expectation of a deliverable from BCAM, right? Um, so I hope that helps. Any, any questions on how and when and, and why to use the ticket system? Any questions on where to access the ticket? online form. Everyone knows- It's where also in the emails, right? That's, yeah, so that's, so the, the ticket system you can find on our BCAM webpage. Uh, from the homepage, go to faculty and staff, drop down BCAM, click on BCAM. On the right-hand bar, there's a space there that you can access that. In each of our email signatures, there's a submitted ticket request or some request BCAM support. Yeah. It links to the same form. Uh, in the weekly Lobo Bites that comes out every single Wednesday without hesitation, there's 120 editions that have, for the last 120 weeks, it's come out every Wednesday, except if there's a holiday or we're closed. In there, there's a link to the ticket system. I believe on the Friday, what's happening calendar invite, there's an email, there's a link to the ticket system. Um, so you can find it in one of those places. And if you can't, then you can email one of us and say, hey, can you tell, sorry, I didn't remember where it was. Can you please tell me where the ticket system is? And we'll say, absolutely, here it is. I recently uh, hit the link. I don't know if it was yours oh. or Rico, and I got a, a jot error. That's been resolved. Okay. That was an issue with the jot form. Okay. Um, we had to we actually, actually renew our um, subscription. So okay. that's been resolved. We have noticed there's been other couple little wonky things happening. So if you all go and submit a ticket, um, and you don't hear back from us is because there's another wonky thing happening within the form and the ticket system that we're trying to resolve. So, but again, how, if we don't, if we don't, like, if you submit a ticket and we don't get it and you don't hear from us, but we don't know, you don't, then that's sometimes where things can fall through the cracks. So I think that's important that you all know it's reasonable to expect to hear from us either with here's the deliverable or here's a draft or hey, can we talk? within two days, two business days of submitting your form. If you don't, it means that something's wrong. Or, so, and it could be, it could be, it, 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 when I say something wrong, it could be a technical issue it, that we didn't get the form. It could be a someone's out of office and forgot to put on their out of office message. Um, it could have been that we're human and we have a lot on our plates and something fell through the cracks. Regardless of the reason why, we need to know if you did not hear a response within two days. In that case, it's better to, to email one of us rather than go to the ticket system because if the reason you didn't hear from us is because there's a glitch in the ticket system and you keep communicating to the ticket system. So in that case, email, you know, email one of us directly. Um, we have just a few more minutes. It's 11 now. Those of you that need to go, please do. If you want to stay and have more questions, uh, I'm welcome. I'm free to hang out. There might be other two parts of the team that are, are free to hang out. Um, to answer any other questions or to take ideas or recommendations on other topics to go over in our next session. You know, when we submit a ticket to IT, we get a response immediately. Mm -hmm. it's been, is there a way to do that for BCAP? You should be, that's what I was saying. Should we you, should, should get that? you should be getting an automatic response. Once you hit submit, you should get a response that says, um, you know, thank you for submitting a ticket. We've received your inquiry. You should be hearing from us. Um, yes, that should be an automated thing that you get when you submit a ticket. Awesome. Yeah.